Hey, what's up guys? We're back again with the quickest Goblin Barrel Cycle deck that you've ever seen. Speeding through with a 1.8 Elixir Cycle using Mirror. After you bait out your opponent's small spells with the first Goblin Barrel, the second Goblin Barrel will shine. Without any spells in sight, the green goblins will have the tower all to their delight. And after the goblins are gone, you only have to cycle three Elixir with Ice Spirit, Fire Spirit, and Skeletons to get back to another set of barrels. This Mimi Goblin Barrel Cycle deck allows for massive outplay potential and it's a ton of fun to play. With this deck's Rapid Cycle spam, your mechanics are gonna get refined. Whether it's activating King Towers with Mega Knights and Bandits, or maximizing your pots and elixir trades with perfect cycle defenses. It's time to bait out a ton of logs, unleash an unbelievable amount of Goblin Barrels, and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using Crate Code Sir Tide to make all the daily videos possible. On to the next one. This man's got a Mega Knight banner, and he's gonna be hopping in all over the place, hopefully directly to our King Tower. You guys know the business? We're gonna be dropping a Fire Spirit here. Wow, I love that it was in his banner, and he immediately showcases the card. So we're going to go Goblin Barrel off to the side because there's no chance he's going to end up having Tornado, right? He's got to have arrows for our Dark Goblin too. Come on, man. Don't do me like this. I'm going to Dark Goblin the other side to divide his attention so maybe he can't spam as frivolously with his Mega Knight. And then we're going to go in for an Ice Spirit here so we can pull the Mega Knight and then activate King Tower quite nicely. We want a Fire Spirit so we can finish off the bats and not take too much damage. But as you guys can see, Mega Knight is extraordinarily easy to play against. And if you play a deck like the one that we're playing right now, it will teach you the right mechanics because you can activate King Tower with almost every card in your deck against a Mega Knight. As long as you're dropping two cards in that placement that I was showing before, you'll easily activate King Tower against Mega Knight every time. And also, why does this guy have P.E.K.K.A.? I was stumbling because I was like, this guy doesn't have P.E.K.K.A plus Mega Knight. I'm imagining things right now. Oh my gosh, it's getting even more wild. He's got Graveyard. So we've got the double Dark Goblin Brothers. I think we're going to hang on for dear life here. I'm going to go for a log because I want to be able to kill the Archer. And then I should be able to bounce back the P.E.K.K.A. So it's not going to get a hit on my tower, right? I don't think it does. Oh, oh, I'm a failure. So it's not going to get a hit on my tower, right? I was playing with my pride and I'm like, I'm not going to waste Elixir. And the man just blasts me with a big P.E.K.K.A. shot. That's not what we wanted to see, guys. It's fine. It'll keep the game a bit closer. <laughs> maybe for your guys' enjoyment, maybe for my suffering. Who knows? We're going to go in for double fire spirits here. Oh my goodness. That's pretty funny. We paid it out of Tesla. This guy has so many answers to Hog Rider. I'm thankful that we're running a card that can lock directly on his tower. So I'm going to go in for an Ice Spirit on the right-hand side, I think. Or maybe in the back left. Yeah, I'm going to drop in the back left so the Tesla expires in time. That's pretty cool that the Fire Spirit was able to do enough damage so that we don't really have to worry about the Tesla. And then I'm going to go in for probably Mirror Log on top of the Archers, potentially. I don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, he's going to Mega Knight. Well, I should have expected that. Mega Knight players, when they got it in their hand, it's like hot potato. They got to get it out, you know? All right, we're going to drop a Dark Goblin here. He's probably going to Arrows this, which is totally fine. We can Ice Golem to go and kite the Mega Knight to the other side. And then when he goes in for Arrows, we just want to drop a whole bunch of cards in the back. So then we don't have to worry about the Mega Knight jumping on us because we get back to another Ice Golem. <laughs> as soon as he killed the first one, there's another brother for him to have double the trouble. Okay, we can go in for Mirror Log as I was talking about before. I was foreshadowing the future. A double log on top of the Archer so we can finish them off. And then he's not going to have a good counter to the Goblin Barrel, right? We get an Ice Spirit here to go and stun the Mega Knight for a split sec. And then we can go for an Ice Golem again. We were really playing past the Potato with the Mega Knight. I wonder if he's going to be ready for the mysterious Goblin Barrels that appear on his tower like in two seconds. We have a Fire Spirit. We're going for a Goblin Barrel. How many Goblin Barrels can I cycle right now with this deck? It's going to be so much fun. He's going to arrows this one. There's no doubt about it. We can get back to another one in like two seconds, though. We're going to cycle all of them and we're back to another one. <laughs> he's not ready. I'm telling you. He's simply not prepared. He's like, wait, no, no. It's my turn to go on offense, Jake. But it's never your turn to go on offense, man. You have to stay on your side of the map. Always defend. You are never getting the chance to go on offense. You are just going to chill there, all right? How's that make you feel? For the rest of the game, I'm just going to cycle all my Ice Golems, get back to more Goblin Barrels, and make you a sad sir. That's what we love to see. A Mega Knight player that can never jump on our side of the map. Our side is strictly off limits. All right, so jump into the game here. Let's go for an Ice Spirit and check out what this man's got. We're going to be dropping a good luck as well, and we see a ghost. So is he going to have the most P.E.K.K.A. spam? I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm going to go Skelly's here just to surround the ghost so it doesn't do as much damage. And he's going to have Giant Skeleton. Wow. Is it going to be like the Royal Hogs Mother Witch deck that everyone's been playing? It would be pretty fun to play into because we don't have much splash damage, so we'd have to figure out some type of way of making this work. Oh, yep. It's going to be the Mother Witch deck as we anticipated. So in almost every matchup, your best bet is going in for an Ice Golem so then you can go and kite your opponent's units to the other side that are huge tasks because you don't have enough damage to finish it off, so you have to engage both of your towers. So we're going to go in for a Goblin Barrel on the right-hand side, and we'll see if we can get some nice damage here. Royal Giant comes down. Oh, that's bad. 
This is bad news bears, guys. This is not what we wanted to see. I'm gonna go Ice Golem here, so if he goes Mother Witch, it's gonna go right into the Ice Golem instead of be able to, uh, you know, kind of kill my skellies and turn them into pigs. We don't like that. We're gonna go for a Dark Goblin to finish off the Ghost, and if you guys didn't know, Fisherman fully gets countered by an Ice Spirit or Fire Spirit when it gets pulled, so that's nice. Just wanna make sure that our Dark Goblin does not get pulled, ideally. And we're fine with this. Dark Goblin's gonna be able to stay alive, even though the Fisherman's hook was in the air. The Dark Goblin didn't care, so that's kinda cool. I'm getting some nice damage here. We know that our opponent's got Royal Giant, so I want to constantly pester our opponent so he's not able to go for the RG. Especially if we can go for an Ice Spirit to tank for our Goblin Barrel, so we're able to get slightly more damage. And then also, you know, hopefully be able to stun his tower to get extra value as well. So we know our opponent is going to go for Royal Giant any second because he's got a good card cycle. He's got a good matchup. We got to figure out a way to keep him in a bad spot. So I'm going to go in for like a Ice Golem in the back in the left-hand side. I'm going to go in for a Fire Spirit here to try to get a positive elixir trade because usually they'll go ghost or something to finish off the fire spirit so it doesn't lock onto their units guess this guy's built different we're gonna go for two dark goblins and then he's gonna go in for a fisherman that's okay and get an ice spirit down with our dark goblin he might arrows this we'll have to wait and see the good thing about this is we can go for a log to finish off all of his units so two logs should be able to finish off with mother witch i don't know if this is going to work out for us extremely well but i am able to get an ice golem down so we will be able to pop off and make sure that our tower doesn't pop Man, this has been a, a pretty big bonanza of a game. I, I'm so surprised that we were able to defend that. Dude, he's dropping a Royal Giant directly into that again. If we log it back and then we go for Skeletons, we might be able to make this work. We still haven't seen any small spells that are scary. Dude, my Dark Goblins are still alive somehow. What is happening? Those things stayed alive for a century. They're machine gun rapid firing us to victory. All right, we got to go for two Goblin Barrels. That's the way that I'm going to win. I got to go in for another Goblin Barrel and then somehow go in for Skeleton Surround. No way. Does the Dark Goblin take out the tower in the left-hand side too? Okay, Dark Goblin. You're fundamentally unfair. I cannot believe the amount of value that I just got from a mirrored up Dark Goblin. That thing lasted half the match and probably deleted 20 plus worth of elixir. My Dark Goblin has to go to the Olympics because they would invent a whole new medal for him. All right. So we got a game against someone with a P.E.K.K.A. banner. So, we'll see what this guy's cooking, if he's going to be scrambling up some butterflies out here with the P.E.K.K.A. And yeah, he's going to be going in for a Royal Ghost in the back. So it was most certainly going to be a P.E.K.K.A. deck. He's probably farming some masteries for his P.E.K.K.A. We're going to go in for a Dark Goblin here, try to snipe that Royal Ghost. And generally, when you're playing against P.E.K.K.A., you can go in for so many Goblin Barrels. Dude, look at the Dark Goblin basically kissing the Royal Ghost and still getting away with murder. That's incredible. I don't know how the ghost didn't feel the Dark Goblin hurting its soul, but that worked out pretty well. Also, we can activate King Tower here, depending on what happens. I'm going to go in for Skeletons. I'm going to go for a Log. I want to activate King Tower against this bandit, ideally, so maybe we just let the Barbarians do their thing. So I'm going to go for a Fire Spirit here, and then I'm going to go in for a Ice Spirit, and then activate King Tower with the bandit. Let's go! So I needed to eat the damage from the Battle Ram to make that play happen. It's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world, but it does work out. Maybe I'm also correct that I can like double log and finish off a Magic Archer because I have such a quick card cycle. I'm considering doing it. Another thing that you can do is you can just use an Ice Golem and be completely content with that. So I'm going to go for the Ice Golem here, go and kite the Bandit. And then we might go for a Fire Spirit on top of the Magic Archer and then log everything else afterward. And then Skeleton Surround on the Ghost. That was a pretty clean defense as you guys can see, but I am a little bit worried about this Battle Ram that's bolstering at me. It is about to throw a lot of barbs at me, baby. <laughs> All right, we got to go for a log, and we will be able to shut down the Barbarians. So this is one of those matchups that is really good for us, and I just need to make sure that I don't overcommit too hardcore. Generally, when you've got Goblin Barrel and your opponent doesn't have log in their deck, you just cycle goblins like a madman. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be the mean goblin machine. So Goblin Barrel is going to give us some nice damage. That was a pretty good Magic Archer alignment. Wow, he sniped two of the goblins and then zapped immediately to shut that down. This guy is a very good player. I'm impressed by that level of gameplay. Seriously. He's got a P.E.K.K.A. We want to go and kite that with our Ice Golem. If you guys don't do this already, Ice Golem is pretty OP. Oh! Well, that was a failure. <laughs> not gonna lie, that's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> that was not how it's supposed to go down. But fortunately for us, we have such a fast cycle that we might be bailed out by this. Also, I want to ask you guys a question. We want an open form here. If you're running a fast cycle deck, is it a high skill deck or is it low skill? That's one of those things that I never really know. I, I think there's a very variety of opinions that you guys have because, for instance, in that situation, I got bailed out when I made a bad play because my cycle was so freaking fast. I missed the Ice Golem kite on the P.E.K.K.A. and it didn't matter. Also, he did miss the poison on top of the Dark Goblin, which was also pretty funny, but 
you know, it does happen like that. We're gonna go in for a log here. He's gonna go in for a poison, and I think we walk with a W. So we can just cycle with logs and win the game with that. Wouldn't that be pretty meany? Have you guys seen a log cycle deck before or nah? I refuse to finish him off with the Goblin Barrel. We're winning with pure log spam, baby. Let's go, Mirror Log City. <laughs> Timberman, GG, well played, and peace out. We won in one of the memeiest ways ever. We showed Josta in the Extreme Clan what extreme actually means. With the most extreme log cycle in Clash Royale history. There's gotta be a new achievement just for that play. We're the Clash Royale Lumberjack. Let's keep rolling. We got another person with Mega Knight. I remember the last Mega Knight player. We were making his Mega Knight just jump on his side of the map in his bouncy pit. Hopefully we can make this happen again. Maybe he's not gonna be running Mega Knight because we see Fire Spirit. I, I think sometimes people try to debate you and they end up having a Mega Knight in their banner, but they're not actually running it, and it's just mind games. So I'm going to go for a Goblin Barrel on the right-hand side, and we'll see what this man's doing. He is not cycling much. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm supposed to be the fast cycle player up in here. You're not supposed to do this to me, man. This is my thing. This is my thing, bro. Miss me with that. We're in a log, and I think we're going to take some damage from the Dark Goblin, potentially. No, wait, what? How do we defend that with barely taking any damage? That's really cool. And our Dark Goblin locks under the tower. Ours is trained, and his isn't. That's the, that's the difference, guys. Our Dark Goblin knows what it wants in life. All right, he's going to go Heal Spirit. I don't think that really works with any of your cards that I've seen. Maybe it adds to the meme factor, but our deck, it has a bit more of a synergy. Oh, okay. Never mind. I take everything that I said back. Three Musketeers, Heal Spirit. That hits different. That is really annoying. Have you guys ever dropped something on top of the Three Musketeers and then they heal it up with a Heal Spirit? And then you're like, well, that sucked. Yeah, I've done that before. It's not a vibe. Oh, wow. We crushed the Heal Spirit before he was able to make that happen. That's pretty big. I'm going to go in for a Fire Spirit here. Hopefully, I'm able to hit all the Goblins. I'm trying to conserve my Elixir so I can make some meaningful push happen. Because if we don't make a meaningful push happen, we get turned into a meme. So he's going to go for an Electric Spirit and a Dark Goblin. Wait. Hmm. Our strategy might be okay here. I go in for a Goblin Barrel directly on the tower, and then I log, and I hit something in front with the Dark Goblin. That would be awesome. Oh! Oh, yes! A mirrored up Dark Goblin! That was the monster's value that we were hoping for with our log. That is absolutely abundance of value. Holy heck. Positive elixir trades for days, guys. We're going to go in for an Ice Spirit here, and then we should be able to stun whatever he drops to counter the Goblin Barrel, and that would be really nice. Also, drop your Ice Spirit slightly later than you drop the Goblin Barrel, so the Ice Spirit still tanks. You're not dropping the Ice Spirit too soon then. Okay, what do we do? Woo, three Musketeers all on the same side. This is not looking like it's going to be easy for us to counter, but we'll try our hardest. Wait, can I just log cycle them? Is there is there a will? Is there a way? Is there a strategy to be made? We're going to go in for this. We're going to try to go in for like an Ice Golem. Oh, oh it's going to happen. The log cycle of doom. It worked. I can't believe it. We cycled three logs and it shut down three Musketeers. I think it's in the name, guys. It's a recipe for success. Three Musketeers equals three logs. The math checks out. Holy heck, this is incredible. We're cycling Ice Yetis on the map, and he's going to drop three Musketeers. Okay, so if you guys didn't know, you can go in for an Ice Spirit plus a log, and the way that it works is the log stuns the Musketeers so it can't shoot fast enough. So then, even though three Musketeers definitely one shot, one Ice Spirit easily, it doesn't get the opportunity to hit your Ice Spirit. So it's a really good mechanic if you guys didn't know that. That works against Sparky as well with Ice Spirit. Works against three Musketeers. Works against almost every ranged card in the game. But the most beneficial ones are three Musketeers and Sparky. Do that trick of logging and then immediately dropping your Ice Spirit so then it doesn't get finished off. So you can reliably and quickly clean up everything. Yo, this guy's got the animated monk banner. So I'm a little bit scared that he's going to go and try to blast us to oblivion. Snap on our goblin barrels and just propel them back. Oh my gosh, why are you electro dragoning? He's super scared of a fire spirit. I guess it does do 300 damage. Sometimes when you're dropping spirits as meticulously as I am on the river, I'm just spamming every spirit that I have. I'm like, I have a moment. I'm dropping it. I'm spamming it. I'm so concentrated on dropping my fire spirit and ice spirit. Then you're going to be able to extract positive elixir trades because if you think about it, this guy is going to have to go and drop negative trades on one elixir cost cards all day long. What? Oh, no. Dude, he's got Zap and Arrows. Oh, that is not what we wanted to see. Does he have a third small spell? Please say it won't be true. Please say it isn't true, man. Okay, cool. The guy is going to end up having a aggressive Phoenix deck with Arrows and Zap. So I think... Oh, yeah. I was going to say, probably an Elixir Golem deck. And here it is. <laughs> so generally, in this type of matchup, what we want to do is we want to go Ice Golem to go and kite the Leap Barbarians if we can. But I don't think we're going to be able to pull all of them. So I need to get another Ice Golem down to kite the other Barbarian that's near our tower. 
And then I think I can go for an Ice Spirit. He's going to go for arrows. That's totally okay. Ice Spirit's going to be able to stun things for a long period of time. And I'm going to eat the damage from the Phoenix on the other side because it doesn't matter all that much. Maybe we can go in for a mirrored up Dark Goblin Goblin Barrel on the right hand side with the Goblin Barrel on the left hand side baiting out a lot of Elixir. That's cool because I think that we're going to be able to take the maturity of his tower here. I was hoping for a little bit more than that, not going to lie. Man, Zap and Arrows is going to be very difficult for us to defend. So I'm going to go for Skeletons here. I should be able to stop the Phoenix for a plus three Elixir trade, so that's nice. And then I can go for another Fire Spirit. Let's see if he goes Electro Dragon again. Because we activated King Tower, that helped out very well on defense. 777, are we lucky right now or are we going to get destroyed? <laughs> Guess we'll find out. The Dark Goblin should be able to force out some extra Elixir. He's got Elite Barbarians in his deck, so that's one thing I'm slightly scared about. I'm going to go for an Ice Golem here and then a Goblin Barrel. Try to bait out his arrows potentially. Maybe I can take the right hand tower with a Goblin Barrel here. I think I'm going to lose my tower on the right hand side. So it's going to be better for me to just defend minimally and try to snag the tower on the left. Because if I take the tower on the left, or I at least put it in a position where I can take the tower in the future, I think that's going to be my best bet. I'm going to kite his supporting cards directly into us so we can separate the battle healer so we won't have to worry about that. And then I can go for another Goblin Barrel here. And he's going to arrow, so that's okay. Kind of expected that. I want to get another Ice Golem down so we can body block those E Barbs. And I wonder if we're fine or if we're screwed. It's going to be difficult for us to defend this, but maybe we can find a way. We're going to try to log when it's second form half HP, and I think it's getting close. So we're going to log right now, and we're going to Ice Golem in the middle, so then we can extract all the value from the Laser Golem Blobs. I'm going to Fire Spirit here. The Dark Goblin's still alive. We can go for two Dark Goblins. No way! We've got three Dark Goblins on the map! He's going to go arrows, but it wasn't enough. The Dark Goblins are thriving, and my man's diving. This is exactly what we need. All right, if we go in for skeletons and we log and we log again, maybe we can log back with the Elixir Golem Blobs just long enough and we barely win the game. That knockback was my savior. The double logs of justice asserting dominance all over the dirty Elixir Golem spam. Such a fun game. I didn't even know what the heck was happening at the end. I totally thought I was dead when he was setting up a massive push, but just frantically spamming enough Goblin Barrels with decent mechanics is enough to win. And running fast meme cycle decks like this will get you a lot better at the game because when you get overwhelmed in the real game of Clash Royale, you're like, oh man, there's too much going on. You practice this type of stuff and you come back to the real game and then you're going to be wrecking everyone, multitasking like an air traffic controller. Like, subscribe for more daily videos and have an amazing rest of your day.